Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra. And before we start, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. We are still in the introduction phase of this course here, because we work with vectors in R2. And we know from the last video that R2, together with two operations, is a so-called vector space. There we have the scalar multiplication and the vector addition. Now, in today's part 3, we will first combine them and get a linear combination, and then we will extend the two operations to get an inner product. So let's start with the first and simple one, the linear combination. There you see, this is a general term we will use throughout the course. However, in R2, we can nicely visualize this because we work in the plane. So let's say, here we have R2. And there we have learned, a vector can be visualized with an arrow. Now assume that we have two vectors here. The first one we call v and the other one w. Now, for example, we can use the scalar multiplication and scale the vector v by 2. Hence, the resulting vector here is 2 times v. Now what we can also do is to use the vector addition and add the vector w to this vector here. So the new vector we get here is 2 times v plus 1 times w. Indeed, such a construction with the scalar multiplication and the vector addition we call a linear combination. And of course, we put this into a general formal definition. This means here we don't have to restrict ourselves to two vectors. We can simply choose k of them. And maybe for the moment, let's put the number here in an upper index. So we have v1, v2 and so on until we reach vk. Now here, these will be vectors in R2, but you already know, we will generalize this eventually. Okay, now in addition, we also need our scaling factors and let's call them lambda1, lambda2 until we reach lambda k. And as you know, these should be real numbers. Then, with these objects, we can form a new vector by multiplying lambda1 with v1, lambda2 with v2 and so on, and then we add all the resulting vectors. Hence, in a compact notation, we would say j goes from 1 to k, and then we have the sum of lambda j times vj. So you see, this is just similar to the picture we have drawn before. And the vector v we get out here, we simply call a linear combination. So you see here, we just use the structure the vector space R2 gives us. And that's what we call the linear structure of R2. This is what we can do in a vector space, adding and scaling. And now the question is, in addition to this, do we have more structure we can use? For example, a structure to do geometry in the plane. This could mean that we ask the question, do we know in which cases two vectors are perpendicular? And maybe we should answer this question for an example first. Hence, which vectors v are perpendicular to a given vector u? And maybe let's choose u as 2, 1. So you see, this is what we can nicely visualize in the plane again. The vector u we find simply here. So two steps to the right and one to the top. And now we want to find a vector v that is perpendicular to this vector u. Hence, I would say we rotate this vector in this direction until we hit 90 degree. And then it turns out this is a vector where we have to go one step to the left and two to the top. Therefore, this vector v has the coordinates minus one, two. So we say v is orthogonal to u. However, this can't be the only one because we can scale v and still are in the same direction. Hence, we can just introduce a factor lambda here and then we have all the vectors that are perpendicular to u. Now you should see, this whole construction here works no matter which vector u we have. We just have to put the x-coordinate here into the y-coordinate for v and the y-coordinate for u gets the x-coordinate for v with a sign change. 
And with this you see, this only works in R2. In higher dimensions, this gets way more complicated. However, it's possible to reformulate the answer of the question here in a better way, such that we can use it later. Indeed, this will lead us to the so-called inner product. First, let's fix two general vectors u and v, so u is u1, u2, and v is v1 and v2. And now we call the two vectors orthogonal if they satisfy the picture from above. More concretely, this means we find such a factor on lambda. And this one should fulfill that v1, v2 is given by lambda times minus u2 in the first coordinate and u1 in the second coordinate. This is exactly the rotation we discussed before. Okay, now the idea is that we can split this into two formulas. Hence the first one reads v1 is equal to minus lambda times u2 and the second one is v2 is equal to lambda times u1. And of course both equations should still hold for some lambda in R. Okay, now you might ask how does this help us? This is exactly the same as before. Now this is correct, but now we are able to manipulate the first and the second equation separately. For example, the first equation we can multiply with u1 on both sides. Indeed, this gives us a nice result because we can eliminate the lambda factor. You see this because now here we have the combination lambda times u1. And this is what you should recognize from the second equation, this is simply v2. Okay, so this is very nice and now the question is, can we do a similar thing in the second equation? And of course there we now have to multiply with u2. Then there we find the combination u2 times lambda which is minus v1 from the first equation. So you see, in the end we get two new equations where we don't need the factor lambda anymore. Now the first equation is u1 times v1 is equal to minus v2 times u2 and the second equation is u2 times v2 is equal to minus v1 times u1. And there we see, these are exactly the same equations, just the minus sign is on the other side here. Hence we can put both into one formula. And this one simply reads u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2 is equal to zero. And now please recall, this expression here now describes that two vectors are orthogonal. Now exactly for this reason, this expression here on the left hand side gets a new name. It's written with two pointy brackets where we have u and v inside. So two vectors u and v come in and a scalar a number comes out. And this construction is what we call the inner product of u and v. And because we will do this later in a more abstract way, we really should call this the standard inner product. Later we will see there are a lot of other inner products. However, they all have in common that they give us a tool to measure angles. Even more, they also let us calculate lengths. Hence, the standard inner product gives us more structure for our vector space, namely geometry. So you see, with this definition here, multiplying vectors makes sense now. However, please don't forget, the result is not a vector anymore, but a number. Therefore, it's very helpful that we don't use a dot for the inner product, but the pointy brackets. Then in calculations, we immediately see where the scalars are. Okay, then for the last part of the video, I explain how we can measure lengths now. We can do this because now we have to find orthogonality, which means we can use the Pythagorean theorem. In the picture, this would mean a vector v can be split into two parts. Namely, we have the x coordinate v1 here and the y coordinate v2 here. And now we know it makes sense to say that we have a right angle here. Hence, by the Pythagorean theorem, we know that the length of v should be given by the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared. However, we can also use the inner product 
to formulate this expression here. Namely, the inner product v with itself gives us the squares in the addition and then we just take the square root. And this is now what we define to be the norm of v. And there we usually use two lines around the vector v. Also here, to be precise, we would say this is the standard norm on R2. Moreover, you also often see the name Euclidean norm for this definition. And now you should remember, a norm just lets us measure lengths for vectors. Therefore, I can already tell you, all these things here will be abstractly defined later for other vector spaces. Still, I think it's helpful to first start with R2, such that you see the whole thing we describe. The next video will be about lines in R2, and after this one, we will go abstract. Then, we can generalize all these concepts here. Therefore, I really hope that I see you in the next videos. Have a nice day, and bye!